everyone, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. Today is the Quilted Witch, and we're going to talk about different ways to um, approach quilting your canning jar quilt, plus reboot or get moving a UFO of some sort, unfinished object, unfinished project. So the Quilted Witch, I'm doing the version which is without the witch, and I have a layout for you where I'm doing extra items like extra pumpkins and that's what we're going to do this week you're going to do pumpkins more pumpkins than the one if you're doing the witch quilt you just have one pumpkin you would do uh, so here are my pumpkins we're going to put them up on the wall then but look i don't have enough hands these are big big pumpkins i think the witch is almost like the size of a person uh, somebody shared theirs on a bed and it was like a person laying on the bed. Okay, so I'm trying to hold these. <laughs> Wish me luck, I got one more. There we go. Oh my goodness, I don't think I can hold them much longer in my right hand. Ah! Okay, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put them up on the wall. They're kind of like one, two, three. So they're balanced and then we'll get the other, we'll get the other camera. But let me just sort of uh, stick them. They're huge. These are big pump. Th this board is the 18 inch. This is the 18 inch board. So you know they are big. They are big and uh, very fun. I love oversized things. If you, from the drawing room yesterday, you should assume that from our block Wednesday, rather yesterday on the apron block. Uh, Using my drawing room fabric. That's why I said that. Uh, do you know I like big blocks? Look at that. Look how fun that is. <gasps> Doesn't that just fill out that area amazing? And then what will go in there are uh, some bonus leaves and some extra other blocks. And uh, so you get a real feel for everything. Let me, let me get the other camera. So there you go. You can see all the way to the top. And then these pumpkins are... Uh, staggered here on the right then there will be other blocks like this in here twinkle stars and then I have a couple of three leaves which will also go in we'll make the leaves next week because then after the leaves are made you pretty much can sew sew the quilt but look this is how it's going to look that just like I said it just fills it out those pumpkins are big and fun and it's a uh, the quilt is the quilted witches pumpkin patch all right, I am loving, loving this. It is so fun to get it up on the wall and really see, see it explode out, see the design, you know, potential now. Uh, I love it. I, I want to remind you because some of you love to do cross stitch and there is a cross stitch for the quilted witch. It is really similar to the, um, to the quilt itself. Plus there's a quilted witch, oh, there she is, a needle minder. So cute, so so darling. Okay, what else? I had this that I wanted to. I wanted to just a touch base. Um, the fifty. Remember, I'm doing the fifty-two list book, which means once a week there's a list in the book, and depends on which book you may have bought. If you're doing this, it has different topics, and then also I'm keeping up with my planner. I decided to use this planner this year, and um, I'm just filling in. Uh, doing pretty good this one this is a kind of a generic planner so you pick you know you pick your even the month it doesn't have what day it starts you just you know do it for the year that you're working and the month that you started the thing uh, but I've got everything kind of filled out projects that I'm doing and doing pretty good keeping up with that <clears throat> it's just January I should be but I had there was one okay up right side up in these books, the lists are broken into categories. And uh, she tells you, and, and each book has kind of its own theme, so she tells you what the categories are. But the one list for, I think it was last week's list in here, it was said to list things you are really good at. A list of things you're really good at. And that just really stuck with me. You know, I don't know that I have ever sat down and listed what am I good at? Uh, so that just for myself, not for anybody else, not for a job or to get your you know yearly review with your boss, none of that. <laughs> it's just 
for yourself. So you can put in all kinds of things, like you're really good at doing your makeup or your nails, you know, something personal. Uh, you're really good at relationships. You're really good at calling your mom. Uh, you know, whatever it is. If you want to um, just have a little bit of an insightful moment this week, sit down and make a list just for yourself of what you're really good at. Um, so I would love to just here at YouTube, leave me a note in the comments if you decide to do it, uh, if you find that intriguing or thoughtful. Um, yeah, so I'd like to hear. So I just wanted to give you an update on where I am with those things. All right, we're gonna go to the computer and I'm going to show you on my computer some ideas for how to quilt your canning jars. First, let's look if we were going to do a wave stitch. And so I am just going to take on the picture and draw. I just drew it, I'm drawing with black. But the wave stitch would just be like, I like the vertical. Of course, you could do it horizontal. Probably need a little, hopefully you can see that. But this is kind of what it would look like. And you've seen that. And it doesn't, um, I find that it, it doesn't distract. It just kind of looks, you know, like a texture, like you put texture on the piece. And so there would be something where you could just go along there and do the wave stitch. It would just give that texture along here. So let's look at another one. And for this, let's see. I think okay up here wait a minute okay let me do a little bit thicker line okay so I am looking at like what if you're gonna do this with custom so what if you went ahead you could outline everything so I'm just gonna do a little bit here so you would just outline all the jars around you know you would do them really close so that uh, it basically gives a definition of the jar like that so you could do outline all the jars with a straight stitch either on your you know, walking foot or something else like with free motion, then these jars are too big to leave them empty. So you could just do something like you could do maybe this kind of a swirl thing inside. Let me show you over here again on this one. See, you could just kind of do this kind like of loopy loop thing so that it fills in uh, the area and makes it so it's got, you know, some interesting stuff in there. Or you could do um, you could do bubbles. You could do circles like this and go round, around, around, like that. Let me just let me just come in closer. There we go. See? Oh, this is much better, isn't it? Okay. So you could do you could do circles in there. Uh, you could do something just like this. You could just go ar across in uh, kind of like this wave thing, and you could start and stop in each one like that. You could go across, cross, 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 cross. So you could just fill it with some kind of a texture. Now the background, let's say I would do it with white, so it was matching, so you would not see any thread color on the background. The same with this outline. This outline would all be in the white that matches the background. And then the background, you could just do loops. You could do things like this. You're just giving it I like to think, I would think of this more like an applique quilt, like these were applique jars. And so I would just kind of do something that pushed the background sort of flat so that the jars were more lifted from the background. So the background would be kind of heavily quilted and be kind of flat. The um, shelf, you're not gonna see anything in these polka dots. So you could just go like, echo it in a V like this. This is what this is looking like. I'm doing like a V inside of them. You could also do a V underneath them like this, either close or a little bit further away. I really like, if I'm going to do something like this, I really like it to be super close first. So basically that's locking the shape and outlining it like this. And then you give your sort of definition shape underneath it on the white. And what thread color? We'll talk about thread color when I'm when when I'm done. When I have the physical quilt after this digital portion, we'll look at thread color. Um, so there would be a way to sort of, and that looks kind of messy because it's black, you know. And I'm using a drawing pen and not free motioning for real. But it would look really really nice. It would just flatten it down. You could also do the background where you had maybe you had leaves like this, you know, you wanted to do leaves and you could just do kind of a vine and leaves on it like that, you know, leaves 
you know, something, maybe a little circle here and there, and then some leaves again. You know, you could do something that's look maybe a little bit more organic like that and looks a little bit more real. Um, if you didn't want the inside of the jars heavily quilted, you could just come, uh, remember you would outline it. You would have an outline along here like that, but then you could come inside and this is often called echo quilting. So you could either come down like here or you could come across and not have those things here, you know, so that it is, whoops, something shifted there. Let's get, let's put that back. There we go. I don't know what I did. Okay, I got out of the mode. That's what I did. I think I pressed something on my tablet. Okay, there we go. So you could do like two, two inside, like one and then two, which would be a little less um, bulky maybe than some of these up here, some of those options. Okay, so I am thinking for myself of doing matchstick, the matchstick quilting. And now, I, if I was going to do matchstick quilting and kind of simulate it on here, I'm going to use a different computer tool, which is a straight line tool. And then I am just going to copy that baby like this. So here would be my straight line quilting done really fast <laughs> in digital form. So you can see how, yeah, see? You get that, and you know, like I would probably do the white like I did the houses. We're going to look at the houses again. But that white is super effective. And so I'm thinking I would do it on the white, you know, like I did the house. Okay, so let's go back review real quick. Here was the wave and, you know, you could do them much closer together than that or further apart and open. It would, you know, you don't need to have it heavily quilted. On options for free motion, filling the jar somehow, outlining all the jars. Remember, you want to outline them, outline them, outline them. You know, so if I'm going to do this, oh, wait a second, I've got to get the other tool. There we go. So if I was going to outline them like here, sharp, a sharp outline like this. There you go. You can see that would be a nice tidy outline around everything so that the jars actually feel like they are a little bit lifted off the surface and then I would like to kind of quilt down the background or like the matchstick they would be closer together than that even so I hope that's helpful let's take a look at the real quilt and some thread look at thread I have got Orifil threads here and we are going to look at some different colors and what might happen then we'll take a look over at the matchstick that i did before at the houses so here is a cream it's not white it's like an off white and i kind of like that because i think it's just a little bit softer and then i brought a very soft sagey green a pink a pink a peach which i've been using quite often and then the black to just show you to show you black so if i was going to like custom do this custom uh, where I'm changing thread colors, I would do the black on the polka dots because there is more black on there than white. And if I lay the white thread, the white thread, what the light colors come towards you a bit more. And whether you can see this on camera, oh, I think you can see it. I think you can see it on camera. You can, you see the white thread more than you see the black thread. Uh, and so I would go with black. I would always go a shade darker. Personally, I always pick like a little bit darker if, if, if there's two options. Okay, so if I was going to do custom, that's, that's how I would do it. I would do the white or this cream on here, a cream on the background and then black on the polka dots and then maybe pick something for all of these that was kind of a softer like the peach so that do inside all the canning jars might be done in a peach because it would kind of blend across a whole lot of them really well and you can see that now the peach is what I use to do the matchstick on the houses because it does blend super super well so this is so here is the color number 2420 down at, at here, 2420. On the top part, it says Orifel Mako NE 50 slash two, which is 50 weight, two ply made in Italy. 
Uh, it is over here how many meters and how much it weighs, 100% cotton, you can see on that side. So you can read everything on the bottom of the label. And that's a dye lot number under 2420. That's 1DW is the dye lot number. So that's how you read the label. And so that is this peach, which I really love this peach. I think it's a really effective color. So if I was going to do the wave stitch or the match stick, I would just lay the peach down. <coughs> Here you can see how it looks. I'll do a couple of threads back and forth. So here you can see, maybe you can't, they're right here. One, two, three, four threads. Oop, let me move it over. So let me see if you can get closer, 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 closer. They're on this. Wait a second. Here we go. Yeah, I think you can see them now. One, two, three, four. My camera is moving. But that lets you see how, you know, they just sort of blend in. And they're going to do that for almost all of them. You will see it more on the, on the black and white shelf. Because it'll work a little bit more like the cream did because it's light. Now you could go with either the sage green or the pink. Both of those might end up being a bit darker on your background. So like here's the sage on the background fabric right here. And then here is that pink on the background fabric. And so you're going to see that a little bit, a little bit more than the peach. Because the peach is just, just a little bit lighter than the cream. See, they're very, much more similar than, say, these two are, right? These two are more contrast than these two. Okay, so there's a little walk through of uh, thread color. Let's, uh, oh, let me just show you. I'd show you one little blooper here making this. Hold on. Oops. This is what happens when you think you remember the directions. As soon as I sewed these together, I thought that is not right. There must be a spacer in between here because that just looks like crap. <laughs> and there is, there should be a two inch wide white strip. So I will be unsewing this strip from that strip. All right. Yeah, it happens to us all, right? Let's look at the thread on the um, houses again. So once you look again, we're just a little bit of distance from this. Uh, this quilt has a white background, just like the canning jars of mine. I did it with a really light peach. And look on the darks. You come in, 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 and you see that light peach, this looks great on the dark. I, it just, you know, it just works so well on everything. There you can, I think because there's more dark showing, you can see it more. But like on the floral, because there's more pattern, it just kind of blends away. And even from this distance, you're not really noticing the, but you do see the texture. It does give like the shadow of the texture really well on the, on the gray around the bee. Be of good cheer. So, okay, so that's what it looked like in the matchstick on there. How on the calendar to pick a finish it up or a UFO to move it forward Thursday. <laughs> that, would, that would be today. And so I have two options. I have got, got the blocks for the four patch, the fat quarter four patch, and I would like to quick put them up on the wall. So I'm gonna take the quilted witch down and put them up on the wall. I could work on the sea glass, but I don't wanna work on the sea glass. I would like to get this one done. Um, I'm making a mess here, but let me just put this up on the wall so we can take a look at it. It is a four by five setting, so I will get them all up here and then come back with the other camera. So here's how it's looking. There are 20 blocks. Uh, there are two of each. So there are 10 different blocks in here because of the amount of fat quarters that I had. I did two mini bundles of fat quarters that were the same. Uh, so there's a couple things like I will probably move these two away from each other and these two away from each other. These because it's the same print. It's the flag print. So I want to have the flags a little bit more, you know, varied or dispersed. And then these are too close from a distance. You've got that strong red of those two. So I probably have to switch around something maybe um, you know, pull that red up here, and then switch that over here, some somewhere around there. So I'll fiddle around a little bit with that. 
Okay, that's better. I shuffled a few. You don't have those two reds. I took that one away, but these two are kind of similar now, so I'll probably switch a later blue and then put that one up. You know, maybe, I don't know. We'll see. i got to play around a little bit more, but it's pretty close. Did it, did it, did it. Just flip these two. That's all I needed. Okay, that's good. I'm keeping it that way. So that, they look really good. It is a fun pattern. It's very easy. A bunch of big squares. You showcase the fabric. Uh, because I did these sort of mini fat quarter bundles, so they have a bunch more repeats than you might have on a normal fat quarter bundle. Uh, or you could just do from your stash, you could just do 20 fat quarters. Then each one would be different if you coordinated sort of the theme of the colors of it. So there you go. I am going to leave that up there because I'm going to work on sewing it together. So that is... That is my <laughs> January move it forward because it's not, it's, I only started it late last year, so it's not really that old, but I don't want it to get any older. I want it to finish. Uh, so yeah, that's it. All right, my friend, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed uh, the little tutorial I did on my computer for you for sort of layout of the, you know, uh, the quilting. <laughs> What is the words? I'm losing the words. Okay, so there you go. So I love you. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.